day. Beside me, I have a tray of Stedman brownies. Homemade. Homemade. Yeah. By, by Mrs. Stedman. Yeah. And she's Sicilian, Rob. She is? She is. <laughs> well, these brownies are staying with me then. <laughs> Guys, too bad. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome. I didn't know she was going for Sicilian. And what's she running for? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> she's, in, she's in. She's Sicilian. And do you realize, Rob, probably by tomorrow we start a diet? I've gotten kind of used no to chance. these. all these uh, candidates bringing some lovely, lovely goodies. On uh, Friday point. night, we went to an Italian restaurant up on uh, Mount Washington. Uh, the, uh, the guy that owns the place is uh, from Italy, and you could tell because we were sitting right where, like where the kitchen is. You can look back. You could see him cooking back there, and there's a big picture of Jesus on the wall right where he yeah. cooks. He's staring right at the picture the entire time, and it looked just like the picture of Jesus my mother had and that my grandmother had. <laughs> <laughs> It was pretty awesome. He came out. The, he, uh, the people, my, my yeah. brother-in-law knows him real well. Yeah. And it was uh, uh, fabulous. Just in, enjoyed it tremendously. Got a nice little sampler of appetizers. They had Italian wedding soup on the menu. So I always order that because you don't see it too many places. Yeah. So when you get a chance, you never pass on an Italian wedding soup. Good day. I enjoyed it. There's a world exist out there, John, that I don't have any knowledge <laughs> of whatsoever. <laughs> Our guest is Jason Stedman, candidate for Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney. Jason, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. And uh, I know I've seen a lot of your signs around the area. I know you've been actively campaigning. As you get close to the final result tomorrow, what are your feelings? I, I feel good. Um, I put in the work to be here. Um, I've been doing community work for the last 10, 15 years. It's not anything that I've done for this campaign. It's just who I am and what I do, and hopefully that will speak for itself. Um, I think it's important to note that I've got 25 years of experience. Uh, you know, my wife learned how to cook in Tampa, but she can still cook here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean she doesn't know how to do it because she wasn't doing it here. Um, so hopefully that community work will pay off and, and uh, will come through. And your, your, the relevance of that statement was you were a prosecuting attorney in Pinellas County, which is where Tampa is. That's true. Yeah, and, and so that's what your point is, that you did it there, you can do it here. Sure. And the, the good thing about being a prosecutor in that larger urban market is I've seen the, the troubles that are, are to come. I've seen the, the difficulties that are going to come as we grow. And this county is growing incredibly quickly. And we're going to face those challenges as we move forward. And I think it's important to note that I've got experience in other offices and other jurisdictions, and I'm able to use that going forward to be ready for the challenges that Berkeley County will be facing. Very good. Now, let's talk about some of your community work before we get into, uh, back to your prosecutorial work. Uh, you're very involved with the Boy Scouts. I am. I'm actually council president of the Shando Area Council. I've got 3,000 kids in 11 counties in four states. Uh, we recently merged with Mason Dixon Council, and we're happy to have them aboard. Uh, we continue to grow. We continue to evolve, and that's what you have to do. You mentioned uh, the Boy Scouts there previously, but uh, they're dropping the name Boy Scouts soon, aren't they? They are. Uh, it actually came out at the national annual meeting that they're going to Scouting America. What are your thoughts on that? Um, it's a lot of that's national opinion that comes down to me. My, my thoughts don't get to become a part of that. Scouting around the world is scouting around the world. Um, a lot of countries, most of the countries in the world simply have scouting. So we're simply conforming to what else is out there in the world. You mentioned uh, your advantage of being in uh, Tampa is that you see what's to come here in Martinsburg from a bigger city to a, a smaller city. What's to come? What are you what are you fearing? Well, as we grow, we're going to see um, population increase. Obviously, with that is going to come uh, an increased rates of crime, and we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to continue to have to uh, deal with our addiction issues. Um, we're going to have to watch uh, trafficking issues coming into play, obviously watching human trafficking that's occurring in the area. Um, there's going to be a lot to look out for and a lot to deal with. Bill? Uh, yeah, Jason, two things. One with the uh, Scout in America, that's more reflective, I think. Uh, when I go to the Boy Scouts Citizen Dedication, uh, the, the Outstanding Citizen of the Year, I notice a lot of Girl Scouts there. So it's more than just Boy Scouts. So it's a, so I think this is more reflective of uh, the both genders being involved. So. The other thing on your ad, uh, you made a statement, Jason, that you had ideas of how to save the county a lot of money. What are those? 
Well, specifically, one thing that's very important to me is bound over cases. And right now, Berkeley County has approximately 150 bound over cases, and that's where we are in May right now. And a lot of those individuals will sit in jail waiting to make bond, and it costs the county over $50 a day. And I am going to be dedicated to making sure that I bring all bound over individuals to the grand jury within this first term of court. So we have grand jury several times a year, and I think it's important that we not let somebody sit in jail for a year at $50 a day, but rather we bring them to grand jury in the first term and in as many cases as we can. I realize that there's cases when we're not going to have the labs back and we're going to have to wait for certain things, but I want to do my best to make sure that everything's brought in the first term. It is doable. It's not going to cost us any extra money. And the only reason that it's caught some pushback is because it's not been done before. We can make that innovation. We can make that change, and it's going to be for the betterment of Berkeley County. Katie's not doing that now? That implies that Katie just leaves a lot of the folks in jail for no real reason. They tell you that they're going to try to bring them to the grand jury in the first term, but I can tell you I've got one that sat in jail for almost a year waiting for anything to happen. So when we elect a prosecutor, um, kind of go back to the basics here, what are we actually electing? Are we electing a... Uh, an administrator, a, a keen legal eye, a somebody who prioritizes this crime over that crime. What what is the the key element of a of the best prosecutor? I think it's going to be proven leadership, John. You you need somebody who's going to be able to um, look over all the cases that are going forward. You need an effective administrator to make sure that you keep your cases moving. Um, you need somebody that's able to inspire. Uh, the folks around them to be good prosecutors, and you need somebody who's got the responsibility to take the, the, the big cases, the important cases, and see them through to prosecution. And I can tell you I've got the experience to do all of those things. I've been practicing law for 25 years, and I'm ready to bring that experience to this office. But is there a, from a political standpoint, is do you bring a priority of... Does a prosecutor prioritize one kind of crime over another? Is, is that the personal preference? For example, if I'm just making this up, I'm not suggesting that these are your priorities, but if, if, if a prosecutor were really uh, fired up by trafficking, for example, that that, that becomes the number one uh, priority of the prosecution office or by gun crimes or by drugs or whatever, is, is that the priority of the prosecutor's office to decide what gets most aggressively prosecuted, or does that come from someplace else? I, I think every crime is going to need to be effectively prosecuted across the board, and you're going to have to deal on a day-by-day -day basis as to what is going to be prioritized and, and what emphasis is going to be placed on which crimes. Um, as we move forward, I would make certain that I would do that. I would place the most emphasis on the crimes that are important to Berkeley County overall as a whole. Jason Stedman is our guest here on the program, candidate for prosecuting attorney in Berkeley County. Uh, John, did you have another follow-up? No, I was just going to ask from Florida, what were the what are the successes you're most proud of? Are there, the, the, is there a big prosecution that, that, that you're most proud of in the time down there? Well, you've got to realize the Pinellas County prosecutor is, um, is considerably different than the situation we have here. We had a million people in Pinellas County. We had 125 prosecuting attorneys. So it's about you know, 10 times the size of the office here. I can tell you that I was an effective line prosecutor. I did my job and secured as many cases as I could and made sure that justice was moving forward. Sometimes the most important thing is to make sure that you're making progress every day. Where did you rank if there is indeed like a hierarchy of the 125 assistant prosecuting attorneys when you were in Tampa, Jason? Um, I was a number two in a felony division, so there were a number of different divisions, and, and we were divided differently. Uh, so comparatively, I would be similar to, to, to where Joe is. So what the, there's a prosecuting attorney then selects who's going to try the case, and you would have been second in line on certain cases. Is that what you're saying? Our cases were divvied out individually, and then we figured out who was going to try them. Mm -hmm. So I was responsible for my own caseload. How many cases uh, would you say that you handled in your time doing this? 
I could not put a number on it. Be like asking you how many interviews have you done? I just I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're looking for how many interviews I've done, it's a lot. (laughs) Uh, Joe would uh, emphasize the fact that uh, the office management. He's been involved in all aspects of the office management. Can we? make the same comparison to what you did in Florida. You said you were a division, but not the full office. How much management did you get involved in that division management? Not as much there. I think more of that management is going to come from experience where I've run my own business, where I've been involved in management decisions um, with Boy Scouting. So I've I've got plenty of management experience. I I ran my own practice. I've run my own practice for 15 years. So I understand what needs to be done. I understand managerial responsibility. And how many folks were in your practice? With three lawyers and we had three support staff. Mm Mm-hmm. What were the main kind of cases that you handled in private practice, Jason? It, criminal defense, oh, primarily. Criminal defense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the decision to accept a plea versus taking something to trial. As a criminal defense attorney and a prosecuting attorney, you're on opposite sides of how that, uh, how that works. So tell me from a defense attorney standpoint and from a prosecuting attorney standpoint. Well, as a defense attorney, I, I look at what I can do to minimize my client's exposure to additional time and what kind of sentence he's going to be looking at. Uh, As a prosecutor, I want to look at offers that are fair, um, that are going to be moving justice forward and be doing what needs to be done for Berkeley County. Tell me about the process of defending a person who's accused of a felony. And were any of those cases murder cases? I presume some might have been. I've tried plenty of murders. In in terms of defending? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, From an attorney standpoint, whether it's prosecuting attorney or defense attorney, does it matter if you believe the person is guilty? I don't believe it does. And probably one of the most important things I will tell you, Rob, is whether it's civil or whether it's criminal, whether I'm a prosecutor or whether I'm a defense attorney, the first thing I do is build the opponent's case. I need to build the opponent's case before I figure out how I'm going to defend it. If I'm going to prosecute a case, I'm going to figure out the defenses before I lay out a strategy for prosecution Mm -hmm. it's the very first thing i've done in in practice and i've done it civilly i've done it for car accident cases i've done it for murder cases Uh, the first thing i do is build the other side's case and then go forward and figure out how to how to deal with what i need how much time will you put into doing that uh it depends on what kind of case i'm dealing with and in what capacity um you know when i would get a, a complex civil case sometimes it would have several weeks where I'd spend with the medical records and everything to be able to put everything together, understand the big picture to put together a strategy to figure out how to defend the case. Do prosecuting attorneys in, at the county level, do they handle many civil cases? Um, they have some civil cases that they do. They deal with forfeitures and things of that nature. Um, so there is some civil component that needs to be dealt with. Does the If you're the head prosecuting attorney, if you're elected head prosecuting attorney in Berkeley County, are you the person solely responsible for making the call on what gets prosecuted and what doesn't? Ultimately, that responsibility is going to rest in my lap. That, that That is something that I need to make sure that gets handled. And, and if it doesn't get handled, then I'd have to pay the price for that. Do you, from your own personal philosophy, have a system that you would have in place as to who you consult? Or would it strictly be your review and take a look at it and make the sole determination? Well, I would always listen to the folks around me, listen for their input. Ultimately, I, I go back to what I was taught, and that's do the right thing all the time for the right reasons. Um, and that would help guide my judgment as to what should be done with what cases. Obviously, you're going to have cases that have certain problems to them. Um, some are going to have evidentiary problems. Some are going to have factual problems. You know, the facts are tricky things, as John Adams said, and you can't change those. Those you meet where you find them. Um, but, you know, sometimes deals do need to be cut because you've got problems with your case, and I understand that, and I'm ready to deal with that. Final questions for Jason. Yeah. Uh, you're a public defender right now, are you not, Jason? I am not. I've never worked for the public defender's okay, office. Okay, I thought you did, but you do represent some individuals that are they privately uh, uh, negotiated, contracted, that you represent? I do a lot of appointed work through the courts where the courts appoint me. And then my bills actually go to the public defender corporation, but I am, I do not work for the public defender's office. I never have. So, but you do contract with the public defender. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. John, final question for Jason. 
<clears throat> I, you know what I do for a living, right? I, I, I write thrillers. So one of the underpinnings of these is that the system is tilted toward those who cannot afford... I'll go the other way. It's tilted toward people who can afford aggressive defense, right? So the, the people who can afford a good lawyer um, have a better chance of leniency than those who cannot. Do you think there's truth in that? Is, is the justice system equal across all economic lines? I do my best to treat all of my clients equally. I provide them all the same defense. Uh, when I was out and had well, out in my private practice, I, de I defend all of my clients. How about equally. as a prosecutor? As a prosecutor, you prosecute all your cases evenly. It doesn't matter who's got money and who doesn't. Um, you go forward and you do the best you can with what you have. Jason, final comments are yours. Well, Rob, I'm an experienced, proven leader. I know what it takes to, to do this job, and I'm willing to do it. Um, I've got 25 years of experience. That can't be discounted. It comes across the board, and, and I'm glad to bring that experience to Berkeley County. As I said, I want to do the right thing for the right reason all the time. That will guide what I do. You know, when I look at the current administration, sometimes when you're a hammer, you see every problem as a nail. And sometimes you need to realize that there's more than one way to look at things. And I think my 25 years of experience will, will help me do that, help me realize what needs to be done, and help move the county forward. Jason, best of luck to you on Election Day. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Jason. Thanks to the brownies. <laughs>